There are many special and impressive trophies in the sporting world, but when it comes to polo, they all play second fiddle to this. This year, the Audi International is between England and the United States of America. And when these two teams meet, this magnificent trophy is the prize. This is to polo what the Ashes are to cricket, what the Ryder Cup is to golf. And the reward for the winners today is the historic Westchester Cup. Welcome to the Audi International here at Guards Polo Club in the beautiful surroundings of Windsor Great Park, where the two teams, England and the USA, will go head to head in the blue ribboned event of international polo. This matchup has quite some history. The rivalry dates back to 1886, when a team from the Hurlingham Club London travelled to Newport, Rhode Island to play against an American team represented by the Westchester Polo Club. The English won that very first encounter and the match was one of the first ever international sporting events in modern history. The winners of that inaugural match had nothing to lift in celebration. The trophy wasn't made until a year later, but it was well worth the wait because a million dollar sterling silver cup was to be the prize. The English were victorious in the early stages of the competition, but USA had their first success in 1909 and from then on had a period of dominance, winning eight of the next nine matches. In 1992, a new format was introduced, a single winner-takes-all game here at Guards. A packed crowd was on hand and the game went into double overtime, but the Americans were just victorious and won the game eight goals to seven. 1997 now, and after 76 years of blood, sweat and tears, England finally got their hands back on the cup with a 12-9 victory and ended a losing run that dated back to 1921. And our final fact of our little history lesson brings us to 2009, where the challenge was accepted by the English to contest the cup in Wellington, Florida. It was another thrilling game and wasn't decided until very late in the final chucker, but England won with a 10-9 victory. Which brings us on to today. And once again, these two old rivals will do battle here on the Queen's ground. And the next chapter of the historic Westchester Cup will be written. Now the cup hasn't been contested on English soil for over 16 years and the historical standings see America lead 10-6. The confidence must be high in the American camp. Yeah, I mean, you know, I think if we weren't feeling confident, we'd, we'd have a problem. So, I mean, you know, we've been, you know, we've been working hard at this and, uh, you know, the team's been here for about two weeks and we've been practicing and getting the horses ready. So, I mean, we feel good, um, you know, the horse-wise, we're feeling quite good as well. So, you know, we're ready to rock and roll. You know, it's always been a dream of mine and, uh, you know, it's, it's been a dream of mine to, to play it, yet to be a captain is even, you know, a greater, um, a greater honor and, uh, you know, hopefully I can lead them the right way and, uh, and, and bring home the cup, so. They beat us last time in the United States in 2009, so you know we're we're really hungry to take this one back home with us. But you know we know that it's going to be very tough. You know they're a world-class team, um, and they're all very well mounted, and they've been playing together for a while. So it's going to be tough. But if we stick to our plan, I think um, you know hopefully it comes out positive. Now it's been an incredibly successful sporting summer here in this country and one man that always looks forward to the Audi International is England captain Luke Tomlinson. He knows exactly what it takes to lift the Westchester Cup as he was part of the winning side back in 2009. An amazing victory because we were obviously on foreign soil and uh, most of us, uh, or three of us, were on rented ponies and borrowed ponies uh, playing against an American team that was uh, a strong team. Uh, but we had a, an amazing organisation and, uh, and it was, a, it was a, a good victory. How proud are you now here on English soil leading out the England team today? Very proud, you know, it's, uh, it's going to be a big game, uh, luckily beautiful weather, um, you know, a lot of crowds are here and, uh, and it's a great honour. I think it's the second oldest sporting event uh, between two nations and, uh, and you know, it's, it 
carries a lot of history and, and a lot of honour goes with it. Polo is one of the most exciting and enthralling sports you will ever see. And on show here today are some of the best players in the world. Now, polo has a handicap system similar to golf to rate a player's ability. When you start, you're given a minus two handicap, and then it goes minus one, zero, one, two, three, all the way up to 10, 10 being the highest you can achieve. There are only a dozen or so 10 goalers in the whole of the world. Now, polo is a fairly basic concept. Put the ball through your opponent's goal more times to win. But there are a few more things you need to know about this great game. The main rule you'll probably hear quite a lot of is the line of the ball or right of way. Here's the basics you need to know. When a player hits the ball, whether it's two meters or 200 meters, an imaginary line is created. That is their line. A player cannot come across and try and steal the ball. The only way they can do that is come up next to them, push them off the line or hook their stick. Two more things for you to know. Every time a goal is scored, you change direction. So the teams attack in the opposite goal. This is done over six chuckers, six intervals of play, all seven and a half minutes long. And of course, we have a half time straight after the third chucker for the traditional treading of the divots. So that's the basics of a few rules. We'll go into more detail as the game develops. But first, let's check on the full lineups for the big match. Nick Roldan. Nick is captain of the USA team and won his first high goal polo tournament at just aged 15. Since then, Nick has scaled the handicap ladder to reach his current eight goals. He's played all over the world and is incredibly proud to be playing in this historic match. Mike Azaro. Born in Chicago, Mike had attained a 10 goal handicap by the age of just 26 and maintained that for an impressive 14 years. He was part of the losing US team in 2009, so we'll definitely be hoping for a different outcome today. Mark Ganzi. Mark is a vastly experienced player, having won many prestigious tournaments in America and this past US season has been playing with some of the best in the world for the Audi polo team. Pablo Pierres. Pablo was born in Greenwich, Connecticut, but grew up in Argentina. He's only 27 years old, but has already played in the Argentine Open, the highest level of polo tournament on the planet, four times. He will certainly be one to keep an eye on and could provide some fireworks on the field. Luke Tomlinson. 37-year-old Luke captains the England team and with seven goals is one of England's highest handicap players. Luke knows just what it takes to win this trophy and is looking forward to experiencing the Westchester Cup on home soil for the first time. James Byme. James plays off seven goals, a handicap he has maintained since 2009. This year, he won the Outstanding British Professional Award at the Audi Polo Awards for the second year running, and James is incredibly honored to represent England once again. Mark Tomlinson. Mark is the 31-year-old younger brother of Luke. He made his international debut back in 2004 and has been a regular ever since. Expect plenty of skill and commitment from Mark. He's certainly one to watch. John Paul Clarkin. In keeping with the traditions of the match, John Paul joins the England team as a representative of the Commonwealth. John Paul isn't only the highest handicap player on the team today, he is also the highest rated New Zealander. And as an honorary Englishman for the day, JP will be hoping the home nation's sporting summer of success continues. So there we have the two lineups for the 2013 Westchester Cup. England have quality and experience throughout the side, and the USA look to have some potential match winners in their lineup. And as you will see, because the handicap totals for the two sides are different, the USA will begin the match with a two goal advantage. A tremendous atmosphere is building here. We've just had the team entrances onto the field, the two national anthems, and baby George's grandfather, His Royal Highness, the Prince of Wales, has taken his place in the royal box. And we're all set to go with a 2013 Audi International for the Westchester Cup. It's England in the white shirts and the USA in the blue. Tomlinson having a look over his shoulder, checks hard. Luke Tomlinson, John Paul Clarkin just checking in behind. Tomlinson here, the number four for England. Little dance there on that chestnut pony. Good play here from Luke. 
just waiting for the way to clear and then he fires it downfield. I think he may have hit the back of Mark Gansey there. Gansey with an immediate hit just to uh, welcome him to the game and there's the pass and it's going to be Luke Tomlinson, the number four, coming through. He's half hooked out of it but it's been kicked on by a pony and Tomlinson now with a chance here. Coming back in defence was Nick Roldan. It's still England, it's, it's Mark Tomlinson. Mark Tomlinson with a shot and England draw first blood. You see there the Americans coming in, desperate defence. In fact, it's come off the end of the stick and gone in the wrong direction. And England capitalising there as uh, Mark Tomlinson straight through the middle and the gold judge waving his flags. We're back underway and this one's fallen nicely for the Americans coming across the field here. This is good play. Azara goes up for the pass. Little uh, play there where he's called out of the play. The shot goes up. But, uh, well, James Byme read it nicely. Here comes Azara around the corner and cuts it downfield, looking for the run here of Roldan. It's Roldan and Polito Pieris. It's Pieris on the far side, little flick in field there with the open backhander as he was hard marked, but it's fallen nicely for Luke Tomlinson coming across the field. In fact, this is uh, John Paul Clarkin. Clarkin, the number three here, clearing danger for the English team. Opens his shoulders and spanks that one downfield, looking for the run here of... Uh, James Byme, the number one. Byme here seems to have the horsepower and he's gone through. Was there a whistle? No. Appealing for the foul, but nothing given. Cutting the ball round the corner come the Americans. Lovely forward uh, shot there, looking for the run of Azaro. Azaro on the far side, little tap forward from him. Setting the play up as James Byme comes in with a crunching ride off and the ball's been left this time for Tomlinson. It's Tomlinson now turning and driving down towards goal. This is the number two here for England. And can he tie the game here at two goals apiece? It's Mark Tomlinson. He's already scored one. He's looking for the next shot. The angle's too great. He just pushed the approach out to the right and the ball has gone wide and over the back line. As you see here, he wanted this approach shot just to come a little bit further in field. This one here, he just pushes it out to the right, and then from there, he's got an awful lot to do. Look at the angle, and he just couldn't quite get his stick wrapped around that one. Coming downfield he goes. He's got Tomlinson coming back in defense from him, but this is Polito Pieris. Drives it downfield, Luke Tomlinson switching and the Americans will burst through here. Has the whistle gone? No, they're still in possession of the ball. Play will continue and the Americans will score. Three goals to one. Lovely play from Azaro there in front of goal. Piedis made it. There's the drive downfield. Luke came across and switched, but uh, as he came across to hook, Azaro evaded the hook, went underneath the stick there of Luke Tomlinson. And look at this. Once, twice, straight through the middle, as cool as you like. Tomlinson with time to turn good blocking work there from his brother Mark giving Luke a bit of time to turn the play and he fires it downfield towards John Paul Clark and Clarkin doesn't get all of that but he's still in possession of the ball and he picks that one up nicely on the half volley that's down towards the danger zone who's on the end of this it's going to be James Byme by me with the next shot he's just found it what a lovely goal for England Look at that, half volley, plucks that one and pops it right out in front of Baimi and he says, thanks very much, I'm going to come in and finish that with a lovely, leisurely under the next shot. That's the end of the first chucker, the USA lead three goals to two. Join us after the break. Welcome back to the Audi International here for the Westchester Cup. The second chuck is just about to start. Let's rejoin the action. It's going to be Mike Azaro, the number four here. 
opens yeah. his shoulders and well the stick head's just flown straight off there as he hit that he's appealing for a stick and the, I think the head went further than the ball but the Americans still in possession as that one's cut down field but it's fallen nicely here for Clarkin Clarkin looking for the deep screw under the next shot and it's worked there more luck than judgment it's worked there and landed right in front of Luke Tomlinson as by me comes in flicks it under his pony's tail that's a really good effort has it gone in it's just well it is it's in I thought it was wide. What a super hit there from James Byme. Here's the hit. Look, lands in front of Tomlinson. He opens his shoulders. He sees Byme free, pushes it out to the right. And look at the angle here from Byme. Absolutely beautiful. But it's three goals apiece in the second chucker here as Luke comes through. He's hooked out of the play. This is good stuff from Polito Pieris. Pieris now on the march here for the Americans, switching onto the near side. And this is a good break. Coming through is Azaro, but uh, beautifully read from Luke, who cuts that backhander down towards his brother Mark. Mark now coming down uh, hard on this bay pony. Lovely play from Mark Tomlinson. There's the approach shot. There's no one between him and the goal. This surely now for Mark. A little tap, and he's got it. 4 3 England. Uh, lovely play from Mark. He's had a, had a look over his shoulder. He realized that there was a bit of space and it was just basically him and the ball. And he just had to get his head down and focus on that and ends up with a little pop tap shot through the post. So England 4-3 as we watch him coming through the pack here once again. Lovely play from Mark. As John Paul Clarkin came in, opening his shoulders there is uh, Roldan firing that one downfield. Out to the right they come, there and uh, it's going to be Luke Tomlinson coming across here in defence, but he can't pick up the line there. It'll be Azaro with a little bit of time here, takes a couple of taps. Tomlinson will have to clear the way and give him space, and there's the drive downfield, but he hasn't quite found the shot that he wanted. Onto the near side goes Mark Tomlinson, but a mistake here from England, and this is a really good chance for the Americans, and a lovely goal from Polito Pieris. And it was all too easy in the end for the Americans, a little flick there. You see Baimi coming in to try and hook, but uh, Paulito smashing it through the post, and that's the end of the second chucker. The two teams locked at four goals apiece. It's going to be Mike Azaro. A couple of taps. Lofted drive, lovely hit from Mike. Always had a very good swing on him, and he's put that one downfield, but, uh, well, it's been well read by... Mark Tomlinson, Tomlinson up to Byme. Byme tries to steal that one away from uh, the Americans, but this is good play. And this is Nick Roldan, I think. Roldan with the open shot down towards goal as he found it. He has. What a lovely shot. 5-4 in favor of the Americans. Let's have another look at this. Beautiful hit here. In fact, it's Paulito Pieris. I beg your pardon, Pieris. Tapping the ball down round the corner on that beautiful dark bay and then opening his shoulders. Oh, he's hit, clipped the bottom of the post and in. What a lovely play from Piedis. Super hit. Look at this. Lands. Boom. Thank you very much. Coming through there was Nick Roldan on the grey pony, and he's, uh, well, he's going to get a second bite at this. Roldan now on this lovely grey, opens his shoulders and fires it downfield. He hasn't quite found all the ball, all the shot that he wanted there. He topped it slightly, but he's still in possession. As you see, Mark Gansey coming in there, doing a good blocking job. James Byme, the number one for England, wants a piece of the pie. Big right off there from Clarkin. And the goal shot there for the Americans, a little flick. And the goal, has it been awarded? Was there a whistle? It's gone over the line. Look at this lovely grey pony operate. Huge right off there from Clarkin. Look at him hit him, but look at that skill. Near side, under the neck. And coming in here, the number two, a little flick, reverse flick there from Polito. And the goal has been awarded. It's six goals to four in favor of the Americans. So England find themselves two goals down. As on the far side, it's going to be rolled down there on that gray pony. Fires it down under his pony's neck, looking for the run here. Oh, Vazaro onto the near side he goes. Under the pony's neck once again on the near side, but it's, uh, well, it's cleared on the doorstep right in the danger zone there from Mark Tomlinson across his own goal. Clark in. Trying to put that American under pressure, but the near side backhander comes in. That super play there from America, but this will be James Byme for England in front of his own goal. Oh, he's left it behind, and what a chance here. Pieris, the number two, with a little jink behind the pony of Byme, and it's seven goals to four. Well, what a couple of minutes here for the Americans. Let's have another look at this. This is a mistake from James Byme, surely. Comes across there, he's over the top of the ball. Kicked by his pony, and look at that. Did he fake? I think he did. That's a super little play there. Fake the backhander. Look at this. 
from Pieris. As Baimi comes across there, hits his pony's back leg. Look at this, fake and in behind. Thank you very much. Super play from Pieris, and look what it means to him. So the Americans on the march here in this third chaka. And England desperate for a goal and desperate to stop the rot as, uh, well, Tomlinson downfield. Backhander comes in there from roll down on that lovely grey pony that's giving him such a good chucker. Huge hit there as Tomlinson collides there with Gansey. And Tomlinson will turn the play here. This is Luke. Cool hand Luke, the number four. Cuts in behind Gansey there and still working his way, muscling his way down towards goal. Gansey comes in and surely there's a whistle. He's holding his face. Is he okay? Has he been hit? Or is he just disgusted with himself for fouling? Let's have a look. Luke taps it round the corner, gets the better of Gansey there. Now watch, he's got to clear the way and let him come through. And he just runs over the top of the ball there with the pony. And concedes the foul. So a chance here. Surely this is going to be a short penalty to England. Trailing by three, would you believe it? Halfway through this third chucka. And uh, this is going to be a penalty too, I would have thought, in favour of the English. As Tomlinson here, we see on the replay, bursting through. You can see the American there on the bay pony, running over the ball, right over the right of way. And in fact, the penalty is tapped in by Luke Tomlinson. So they cut the deficit, five goals to seven now, England trail. Back to the centre we go, England from left to right as we look in the white shirts. And we're back underway and Bimey has stolen this one away and Azara will have to lean out and try and get the hook. But it's James Bime with no one between him and the goal. It's Bimey looking over his shoulder. James Bime now, surely Bime from here as Azara comes back in defence and James Bime has got another one. Wow, what a chucker. Look at that, lands right in front of him and this horse is absolutely flying. No one's going to catch him there. Buy me a couple of taps and look at this for an approach shot. Another little glance over his shoulder. Decides to take Azaro out and ride him off just in case and let the ball just run over the line. But uh, Azaro arriving a little bit late as it's uh, buy me shot there. That little flick shot is perfectly through the middle of the goal and Azaro eventually pulls out of the play. So England trailing now by a goal. Six goals to seven in favour of the Americans. Breaking away with the ball here are the United States. Under the neck he goes. Lovely shot up to the front door. Latching onto that one will be Nick Roldan. Hooked out of the plate. And back in defence is Clarkin. Clarkin with an open backhander. Mark Tomlinson trying to come in there against uh, Paulito Pieris. And they come in with a crunching right off. And the ball is left this time to Luke. It's lucky Luke, the number four. He's in possession of the ball. Look at that. Uh, Pieris is pointing the ball, saying, you've got plenty of space. Why don't you go to it? And he's stolen the ball away, and the umpires have... Uh, well, the whistle remains silent, but it's all uh, academic. As Pieris is over the top of the play, and he's left it behind once again for Tomlinson. Tomlinson fires it outfield down towards Bimey. Now, Bimey with a chance to slow things down and control it for England. Fires it downfield, looking for the run here of Luke. But... Uh, it's the Americans, it's going to be a oh, and a mistake there and a ride off and Luke has a bit of a chance here for England. He's gone past the, uh, the hook there of Roldan and it's still Luke on a bouncing pony onto the near side, surely. It's seven all. So Tomlinson, look at this, avoids the hook there, evades the hook of Pieris. And still, look at the pony bouncing, the ball's bouncing, he's reaching back to pick it up, another challenge comes in, he switches onto the near side and flicks it across under his pony's neck. Super play there from Luke. The Americans don't know where the ball is, it's desperate defence, isn't it? Look at this, onto the near side, and then, uh, well, Azaro came in right on the goal line, but he had no play on it. And Luke pops it in. Back underway we go, and a chance here for the Americans, and this is a really good-looking attack. Surely from here he's going to take the lead. A lovely shot, and it's straight through the middle of the goal, and it's just a goal fest at the moment. 8-7 in favour of the United States. Seconds remaining here in this third chakra, and my word have we seen some goals. Look at this power play. Roldan, lovely bay pony, and he pops it through. And that is the end of the first half, ladies and gentlemen. An incredible chucker of polo. It's eight goals to seven in favor of the United States. 
so it's the end of the third chucker it's half time and it actually looked like England were going to be behind by quite a considerable amount of goals but some strong moments there in the end mean that they only trail by one goal USA lead going into half time join us after the break Hello and welcome back to the Audi International for the Westchester Cup. Now it's half time and the USA lead eight goals to seven and it is the time for traditional divot stomping as you can see people behind me. Earlier on I caught up with some familiar faces. It's that great transatlantic rivalry that doesn't happen that often. There aren't that many sports where there is this huge rivalry between the two great nations. The two empires. The two empires, exactly. <laughs> and what it is, I mean, it's the ashes, it's like the ashes in the cricket, it's like the Ryder Cup in golf. Mm -hmm. um, so it's pretty, pretty prestigious today. And it's, a, it's a pretty big event and, you, you know, I've been lucky enough to come to a, quite a few polo uh, matches over the last few years, but this is, this is one of the big ones. So who are you going to be supporting today? Is it going to be oh, England or is it going to be America? 